Spying and shit. Oh, One world wants. What was this called? Counterpart. That sounds interesting. Yeah. yeah, and the one is trying to set a war with the other one because they think that we gave them a pandemic. It's really cool. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah it's, it's really cool. It gets, it's got a. Uh, oh, it's an actor's name. Who was that? You know, the guy that played the. Um, Spider-Man. Toby McGuire. No, not Toby McGuire. The guy that runs the uh, newspaper. Oh, J. Joe and James. Yeah, he's in it. Nice. He, he plays a great part in it. So That's he nice. plays one of each person. You know? Oh, it's good. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll check that out. But uh, right now, let's play some D&D. That's excellent. Uh, yeah, good morning. What's up? It's, uh, it's early. It's really early. It's 8.37 on the 23rd of October. It is D&D &D time. Uh, where are we at? Session 36, Odyssey of the Dragon Lords. We're, uh, we're, we're, we're getting into the meat and the potatoes, if you will. Um, yeah, we, we were off last week, so we got some catching up to do. Uh, and... I think uh, we can just let uh, Miss Arcadia do our recap and then jump into it. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Uh -huh. yep. All right. So we started the session at dawn on Saturday, our 37th day together. During the five days at sea, the party might hear harp music, but then never when they're around. And if they go up on deck, they might see Arcadia walking away from Kyra. She has been doing her military Arcadia has been doing her military exercises in earnest. She's actually asked the party to help her uh, practice like her Amazon sisters did. You find that she's becoming maybe a little bit more open with them. And they might notice that the tattoo on her right arm looks like a stylized kraken. During the journey, she also asks Nicodemus where and what the Colossus of Pythor is. It is an, an immense statue at the entrance of the harbor. Also. She asks if he has ever heard of the Lady of the Coins, and he tells her he believes she runs the Thieves' Guild. We end up going straight into the docks. Queen Ballas is there to meet us, but before she can really say anything, well, actually, Car Corbin reloads the crossbows and uses minor illusion to create a flag on top with his face on it, arms raised in victory. Before Queen Vallis and her retinue can really say anything, a silver dragon descends from the heavens towards the Ultros. It passes overhead and lands on the docks ahead. King Acastus slides off Icarus's back. He says, you are great warriors indeed to have taken command of my ancestor's ship, but the Ultros is a relic from bygone days. To stand up to the power of the Titans, we will need dragons, not ancient ships. He congratulates us coldly for getting the Ultros and looks a little disappointed that we are still alive. Demetrius points out that there was an assassin sent after us that we dispatched with ease, and for a brief moment, anger flashes in Vallis's eyes. Vallis offers to help us man the ship, and we explain that we set the ghosts free because we do not believe in slavery. When he hears that, Acastus hops on Icarus and flies away. Vallis tells us that there was a break-in and instruments were stolen from the famed band Four Winds, but magically reappeared a few days later. We don't rat on Kyra, although Emetrius gives Vallis a knowing nod and says we will it will never happen again. Emetrius asks Vallis if she has information on the Antikythera, which is the compass that will help us navigate the Eltros. She says to seek her out the night before we leave, but be hasty, we're running out of time. She didn't react to Camos being 40 years older, but when asked about it, she says, mm, sorry, but you're fucked. Camos says, I always suspected. Apparently this was a reversible spell, but only for 24 hours. Arcadia at first wants to look for clues as to the whereabouts of the a Lady of the Coins at the Satyr's Tale, but then we decide to go to the Colossus of Pythor directly. 
we also notice as we're walking there that, that we, we notice when we are near Ametrius, we feel a little more powerful. And the divine Stalin has blessed him with a magical aura of protection. As we walk to the Colossus of Pythor, Corbin starts rattling off facts like a tour guide. Arcadia receives a magic item from Dan uh, for a present, and it is a second level spell scroll, a scroll of rope trick. And Dan also pulls from the deck of minor things and is filled with positive energy, which he gives Camos, which in the form of temporary hit points. And he says, don't worry, old man, we're going to fix this. And, and Camos, who, by the way, is played by the player who plays Corbin, which will also be the case today, says, that's a pretty good drink. Echinacea. Um, as we get to towards the... The Colossus Corbin says, yes, 50,000 workers worked on it. Pythor could have built it in a day, but they worshipped him so. And if you notice, it is strategically positioned with the ass facing the city. As we get to the right foot, there is a closed door with a rope in front of it saying, keep out, signed King Acastus. Two of his golems are guarding it. Demetrius comes up with a plan to distract them and lure them away while the rest of us can try to break in. As he does so, uh, we don't wait very long. <laughs> this is not a very, I was not a very good player, but I, it, I have to say, it, you know, this was only supposed to be 12 seconds, but in real time, it was something like 15 and I got impatient. So bad player me. Um, anyway, so he is saying, out of my way, you poorly crafted pieces of rock. I am a hero. Is that all you got, you shitty pieces of rock? I'm getting in that door no matter what you two assholes do. And King Acastus is a dickhead. So he is taunting them. We try to get in. We find that the door is magically uh, locked. And the golems discover us, attack us, take Arcadia down. But Ametrius comes to our rescue and uh, lures them away while the rest of us run off. And for once, Arcadia is appreciative of Ametrius's mouth. A couple of new things, we see that Nico, he can uh, wild shape into a panther. He also did so into a spider, but when he went through the keyhole trying to open the door, that's how we found out it was magically protected. As we get away, Marcadia stands there panting and says, well, that was a total disaster, and Demetrius points out that is your own fault if they had, we had just waited. Um, he, his plan was excellent. excellent. Um, Nico drops his wild. Shape says, this is the first time we've run away from a fight, at least um, successfully. Uh, Ametrius casts Lay on Hands to Arcadia. I will get back to this later. We go to the Great Agora, and Corbin looks for the most magnificent, shiny, giant-sized longbow that he can find. He says to Arcadia, is this what the Amazons use? I've heard they're very good with ranged weapons. And before she can answer, he greedily buys the bow. Demetrius calls him on it, says he thought he had a philosophy to never use a weapon, but Corbin doesn't like, uh, thinks maybe the Amazons have the right idea. And Demetrius says, so you no longer think that people that use weapons are cowards? And Corbin says, maybe not the ranged ones. He ends up giving Demetrius the axe of Xander, and Demetrius puts it on his belt so all people can see it. We sell a few things. Um, some of us keep the profits for ourselves if the magic items were belong to us personally, and some people will share it with the party. Um, Corbin asks Arcadia to show him how to use the bow. She says she gave up using that type of bow when she was very young, but she could probably show him some basics. As we walk through Mitros, we notice flyers for the great games. It says participants will be from even Themis, which gets Arcadia's attention. It will happen in two weeks. We get to a magic shop. Arcadia asks for a ring. The person behind it pulls out a bunch of wedding rings. Arcadia has bad flashbacks about people misunderstanding her. She asks, why, she, which, why would someone as pretty as you want a magical ring? And she says, so I can kill more people with ease as she is covered with blood because she got stabbed four times. The person says, she knows that you might have one. His name is. He is uh, in, um, his name is Julius, and he is in the satyr's tale. Demetrius is looking for a cloak of protection, but she doesn't have one. 
So Amitrius offers her 24,000 gold pieces. Oh, wait. Oh, that was 2,400 gold pieces. Uh, so she could buy a ring of protection for him, too. Nico buys a magical shield, and he gets a discount by letting the person braid his beard. And she puts her finest beads in it free of charge. She chews us all out of the store and proceeds to braid Nico's beard. Amitrius goes to sell his sweat. The sweat dealers in Mitros, there is a signage outside of the door, like a cardboard cutout with a very flattering likeness of them that says, coming soon, sweat of one of the oracles chosen. He gives the pot over, they weigh it, and it is 22.6 kilos. And for those of us who don't speak European, like the rest of the world, or any of that, is uh, it's 49.82 pounds. So they give him a bigger pot for next time. He gets a sack of gold. Then uh, Arcadia, Corbin, and Camos head to the Seder's Tale. But along the way, they run across a cart with musical instruments, and Arcadia sees something small out of the corner of her eye come running towards her. It is a little black, well, it is a black cat that is a stray and seems to take a liking to Arcadia. She has a name tag on her that says Piggy. The shopkeep says no one can has been able to hold her, which Arcadia is holding her. So she puts her on her shoulder and now has a black cat companion. When we get to the satyr's tail, we first thing we notice is it's a hole in the wall. Going in, it is pretty crowded, but filled with thick smoke and various unpleasant smells. Many of the patrons appear to be half orcs, while others are obviously sailors, and they are inebriated, even though it is only around noon. She talks to Julius asks about a ring. He thinks she's talking about marriage. She gets a bad flashback to Ajax when she asks for a private room. But uh, when she asks for him, he switches to Thieves' Cant and asks if she is one of them. And she says yes. And he explains that Moxina, the Lady of the Coins, has heard about your deeds. Um, she, he doesn't know why she wants to. She pretends it's Corbin and well, Corbin is obviously not a thief, so the Julius says if Arcadia is deemed worthy that he by the lady of the coins that he will give another to her friend. But we find that he is extremely uh, biased against centaurs because apparently a centaur uh, caused him to lose his arm. And the person in the magic shop, Grecos, also warned us about him. Um, So let's see. Then he tells us uh, that we can find a way into the Colossus through the sewers and refers us to a man named Nero, who demands 100 gold pieces and a kiss from Arcadia, who eventually agrees. He brings us to the sewers. As she steps in to give him a kiss, the cat scratches him, and he says... Just remember where you are and who you're fucking with as he walks away. Uh, she sends Nyx to get Demetrius and Nicodemus as they follow Nyx to come to the party at the sewers. Two city guards march up to them. Apparently there has been a robbery at the Nordagen estate and they know we like to steal things. When they come up to Arcadia, she describes in general terms Nero and his companion because they had a big sack of gold in front of them kind of sends them on a wild goose chase, telling them that she saw them in an alley behind a random tavern. Amitrius asks Arcadia if she has his ring and his change, but she tells him that it cost all of his gold plus a hundred of her own. He reimburses her and she ends up giving him the ring to wear. And we end the session, I would say around 2 p.m. on Saturday, day 37. All right. Oops. All right. All right. Da, da, da. Yeah. That's a gate. Okay. Right, this is the entrance to the sewers. And um, let's see. 